Thanks for joining us. I'm Kevin McCabe. The police versus the people. It's a battle that's recently been making headlines across the country, and it has people scrambling to find a solution to the violence we've been seeing. But as News 12 The Bronx reporter Brittany Miller found out in this Protect and Respect special report, the answer may be as simple as everyone knowing what's right and what's wrong. Yo, let's get on the wall. Let's get on the wall, man. Get on the fence. See anything wrong with this picture? Well, Put no, your hands behind your back. It's a prime example of what not to do. You got it. You got it. All right, now, now you under arrest. When approached by a police officer, according to former NYPD detective Chuck Berkeley, instead of fighting back, you should first. So listen to his or her command. Get against the fence for me. All right. So if they ask you to put your hands against the fence or wall, calmly turn around, put your hands against the fence or wall. You you see if he has any ID. I'll see I'll see if this one, and we'll deal with him later. Even if the officer is being disrespectful to you, you ought to comply because right now he or she is the person that is in charge, not you. Turn around, my man. Turn around. And choosing to take matters into your own hands can quickly turn a routine stop Yo, into a chaotic confrontation, wall, what New York state law defines as resisting arrest. Right. In fact, it reads That's a so person hard. is guilty yeah, of resisting man. arrest when he intentionally prevents or attempts to prevent a police officer or peace officer from effecting an authorized arrest of himself or another person. Resisting arrest is a class A misdemeanor. If you're resisting arrest, it's a crime. It'll make it worse. You'll get hurt. The police officer may get hurt. You may believe that you're right, and you may believe that the police officer is doing something wrong, but you need to listen to that officer. But does questioning an officer mean you're resisting? If you want to say to the officer, well, why are you stopping me? The officer usually will tell you that after the, the encounter. That's the best time to ask. Well, the question remains why some people see red when confronted by these men and women in blue. People have probably been mistreated by the police or a family member was mistreated by the police. You, you know, um, they, uh, the police disrespected them in the street or tr treated them bad. You know, and some people, they see bad images of police. Some of those images coming right out of Ferguson, Missouri, where Michael Brown was shot six times by a police officer. Now, while the investigation continues into what led to that 18 year old's death and legal action in the case of Eric Gardner, the man who died when NYPD officers put him in a chokehold hangs in the balance. It's clear that with mistreatment, distrust and fear between the police and the people, it can be a recipe for disaster, but it doesn't have have to be just as it's important for us to comply when approached by police it's also important for us to know our rights they ain't got none tell them get out of here tell them get out of here right now or else we gonna lock them up this one is gonna go right here you know Torrin, slap the camera slap the camera slap his camera if an officer tells someone to put their cell phone away that officer now is violating his patrol guy procedure which says that onlookers are allowed to videotape, and while they're videotaping, they also can use vulgar language. Hey, we got you get over there, man. Get over there, man. Get over there. Get over there. Give me that camera, too. Man. The police are no longer allowed to arrest that person for obstruction of governmental administration or for disorderly conduct. From recording cell phone video to questioning authority, it's a matter of knowing your rights when face to face with a police officer in the street. Take, for example, this demonstration of what's supposed to be a simple stop and frisk. You got ID on you? Yeah, I got ID. Yeah? Where? Is there a reason why you put your hands in my pocket? Yeah, because I'm trying to see if you got ID. I'm just frisking you. Wrong. That was a stop and search as the police officers patted him down and then went into his pockets. But let's see the same stop from a different angle. Is in your back pocket? Watch closely as the officer asks for this person's wallet. All right, go ahead. Take it out. And then it's handed to him. What's your name? That protocol, like many others in the city's police department, are detailed in this NYPD procedure handbook. We're told it's given to every single New York City cop. And it has uniform and equipment, personnel matters, disciplinary matters. So if you feel an officer is straying away from certain policies, you can fight back with a write-up. My name? Yeah. Why? Why? You just searched it. First, ask for the officer's name, badge number, and precinct. Smoking, I don't need to tell you that. Get out of here. Whether it's 4433, 
That means the precinct that they're coming from. And if he or she still doesn't want to give up any information, Just write down the date, time, location, and jot down the details on their vehicle. You get that license plate, make and model. I can usually track that officer down and there's other law enforcement uh, organizations out there that can do the same thing. And from there, you can file a civilian complaint. But is there a way to prevent New York's finest from potentially being rough? Training is always important to police officers. It helps us do our job better. So that's why the union is always in favor of retraining and real training on a regular basis. What some may call a happy ending to this tale of two cities. You can't break the law to enforce the law. We're going to make sure that all the members of the NYPD work closely with communities. That they're trained to work effectively with communities to respect every citizen. We also want every citizen to respect the NYPD. Brittany Miller reporting, News 12.